Okay, this is going to be part two of Oh That Mo. Uh, I made it by uh, filming it off of my computer screen. I thought it was so good I would, I would do that. Uh, the thing is, since it may be poor quality being that it's filmed off a video screen, I'm going to provide the link in the description so you can see it if you want to. You just click on it and it'll take you to the original. It's not called Oh That Mo. That's what I call it. It's uh, uh, something else. Uh, I, I forgot it. But I thought it was so good. I thought, I've got to make videos of this thing. So I'm going to provide the link so you can click on it. And that way you can see the original better version of it. So this is part two now. All right. We read about a Muslim man beating his wife, quote, When Allah's messenger came, back Aisha bit. said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Yeah, that's okay. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. According to this hadith, Muhammad did not chastise the man at all for beating his wife. Instead, he sided with the husband concerning their dispute. Also, in the following hadith, Muhammad's wife Aisha recalls an event concerning Muhammad and her, quote, Muhammad struck me on the chest, which caused me pain." Unquote. In fact, Abu Bakr seems to have learned similar behavior from Muhammad. For, in Sahih Bukhari, we read, Narrated Aisha, Abu Bakr came towards me and struck me violently with his fist and said, You have detained the people because of your necklace. But I remained motionless, as if I was dead, lest I should awake Allah's apostle, although that hit was very painful. What is more, in one hadith, Muhammad found it hilarious when his father-in-laws Abu Bakr and Umar slapped and abused various women, including his, that is Muhammad's, own wives. Quote, he, Hadrat Umar, said, I would say something which would make the Prophet laugh, so he said, Messenger of Allah, I wish you had seen the treatment meted out to the daughter of Khadija when she asked me some money, and I got up and slapped her on the neck. Allah's Apostle laughed and said, They around me, as you see, asking for extra money. Abu Bakr then got up and went to Aisha and slapped her on the neck. And Umar stood before Hafsa and slapped her, saying, You ask Allah's Messenger which he does not possess. They said, By Allah, we do not ask Allah's Messenger for anything he does not possess. Muhammad also said, A man will not be asked as to why he beat his wife. This saying is also attested, in the following source. Lastly, in his tafsir, the 12th century Islamic scholar al Shari notes Muhammad as saying, hang the whip so your wives can see it. There's so much about Sharia law that just is not relevant for today. And if you have any doubt, just take a look at ISIS. ISIS is probably the best example of Sharia law today because what ISIS is doing, what Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the man who is leading ISIS, the, the, the leader of ISIS, he is going right back to the Quran, right back to the traditions, applying Sharia law as the prophet, his prophet, did it. And it comes straight out of this book. And that's why it is so barbaric. That's why they are cutting off the heads of the prisoners. And that's right in Surah 47, Ayah 4. That's why they're crucifying. That's in Surah 4. That's why they're beating the wives. That's in Surah 4, Ayah 34. That's why they're cutting off the hands of thieves. That's in Surah 5, Ayah 38. And I could go on and on and on and on. It is barbaric. It is not relevant for today. It doesn't work. It eradicates my freedoms. That's why I don't want Sharia law today. It just doesn't make sense. Bring me back to that which Jesus gave in his example. That does make sense, and I say this all the time. Keith, I tell people, can you show me one thing that's irrelevant with Jesus Christ? And I've said that for 33 years. I've asked that question. In 33 years, I've yet to find anybody that can find anything wrong with Jesus. So if you want the best law, the best example, the best model, the best paradigm, come on back to Jesus. We've got him. Come on home. 
Muhammad allowed his followers to do muta. When Muhammad's soldiers were in battle and away from their wives and became desirous and impassioned, they sought Muhammad's advice. Muhammad's allegedly inspired solution from God was that they should engage in muta marriage. Muta marriage is a temporary marriage contract with a woman for the purpose of sex that would be quickly annulled after the man's sexual desires were taken care of. Bukhari reports, narrated Abdullah, we used to participate in the holy battles led by Allah's apostle and we had nothing, no wives with us. So we said, shall we get ourselves castrated? He forbade us that and then allowed us to marry women with a temporary contract and recited to us, O you who believe, make not unlawful the good things which Allah has made lawful for you, but commit no transgression. Quran 587. Unquote. Muhammad allowed the rape of female war captives while their husbands were alive and present. This is taught in Quran 424. Quote, also prohibited are women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. Unquote. The historical background about the giving of this verse is found in the following hadith. Abu Sayyid al-Qudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Autas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have intercourse with the female captives in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hands possess. That is to say, they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. This is clearly rape, since the Muslim is allowed to have sex with a captive woman while her husband is still alive and present. No sane woman would want to have sex with a warrior who just killed her tribesmen, and while her husband was still present, Thus, such sex can be said to be rape. The true God hates rape and would never permit this. Deuteronomy 22.25 says, But if in the open country a man meets a young woman who is betrothed, and the man seizes her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die." Unquote. Muhammad sucked the tongues of the sons of his companions, which is immoral and perverted. Quote, Muwiyah said, I saw the Prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al-Hasan, son of Ali, for no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked will be tormented by hell fire. Also in a Bukhari hadith we read, Then he, Muhammad, said, Where is the little one? Call the little one to me. Hasan came running and jumped into his lap. Then he put his hand on his beard. Then the Prophet opened his mouth and put his tongue in his mouth. Then he said, O oh Allah, I love him, so love him and the one who loves him." Unquote. Now to save face, some Muslims read into the text the idea that this had to do with dehydration, but there is no evidence of this in the text. And if the boy was dehydrated, why was he running around excited, jumping in Muhammad's lap? Muhammad enjoyed making old women cry for fun. In Ibn Kathir's Life of the Prophet Muhammad, an old woman asked Muhammad to pray she would make it to paradise. Instead, he told her there would be no old women in paradise. She walked away crying. Later, as he laughed, he told one of his companions to go tell her what he meant was she would not be old in paradise, but turned into a virgin. Thus, Muhammad enjoyed seeing old women cry in fear of not making it to heaven. Muhammad lured converts with promises of women with swelling breasts in heaven. Quran 78.31-33 says, Verily, for the pious is a blissful place, gardens and vineyards, and girls with swelling breasts of the same age as themselves." Unquote. Rather than a description of a holy paradise with Almighty God, this sounds more like some sort of celestial brothel imagined up by a depraved 7th century desert nomad. Moreover, Muhammad invented more convenient revelations along with the one we already mentioned involving him marrying his adopted son's wife. For example, at first Muhammad would give his wives equal attention on separate nights, but then afterwards he began to favor certain wives, and Quran 3351 was then conveniently revealed to him which says, 
thou mayest defer the turn of any of them that thou pleasest, and thou mayest receive any thou pleasest. And there is no blame on thee if thou invite one of those turn thou hadst set aside." Unquote. Muhammad's wife Aisha, keen on what was taking place, then said the following in response, quote, I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling your wishes and desires, unquote. Moreover, one night it was Hafsa's turn to be with... Okay, end of part two. Part three coming up.